morning, happy Monday. It's gonna be a beautiful day. It's gonna be in the 70s today. I'm so excited, yay. I've got like a little jumper thing on today. I had someone ask if I had done a room tour. <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> it's just been too crazy. But I thought I'd just do a real quick pan around and kind of point a few things out this morning before I need to start working. Okay, here's where the kids leave me notes where they turn work in. Here's where I keep the pickup passes and things that need to go back to the students. Here are the headphones that the kids use for iReady and AR quizzes, our easel, all kinds of writing papers, our iPads, our listening station. I try to keep two new books out every week. This we haven't used, but this was supposed to be for them to clip onto a piece of work that they wanted to show their parents, but we have Seesaw, so they could do that. Oh, I found somebody's library book. I bet they're missing that. <laughs> Here's my classroom library. I have things sorted by genre here. These are leveled by AR dots, and they're a little bit of a mess. And then here's some more that are by genre. Back here is where I do guided reading. I have my guided reading cart and my drawers where I have the books separated by group. These are extra books that I pull. These are level books for guided reading that I pull. These are my read alouds sorted by season or month. Here are some toothy task cards that I've made, some flip it math games, my sub tub that needs to be updated. Here are some magazines in here, and these are big books. Back here is my sink area and my counter that's kind of a hot mess right now. There's some math tubs right there that I'm using for power hour with rulers and color tiles. Here are just miscellaneous things I keep in these drawers. I have, gosh, all kinds of stuff. I have power hour materials, I have assessments, I have post-it notes in the bottom drawer for the kids to use for sticky note bookmarks. Just, I have things I need to go through. I have all kinds of copies made for the week, kind of stacked up back here and things I don't want to lose. My desk area is a hot mess. It really is. My teacher books and things, writing books back here. This is all the rooted in reading activities for each month, all the writing activities for each type of writing. Well, there's my teacher chair that I love to sit in to read to the kids. There's my schedule. These are our phonics tubs. They have foundations boards in them, and this is what we have dry erase boards in. These are math strategies that we've learned for addition and subtraction. That is our character trait for the month. That's my birthdays, my class jobs. Those every uh, day I switch out which two groups get desks. Calendar, math rotations, which we haven't been able to do for a while because our lessons for Go Math take longer than they used to because they're bigger lessons. So if we get a chance to do rotations, that's how that works. Then this is for Friday Fun Club. They can just choose various activities like a reward for doing hard work all week. These are just free choice books. I have some stuff that needs to go in the closet. <laughs> Our text structures poster and my file cabinets that have LLI books in them. So I have to move this stuff when I want to get books out. Then this is for STEM. These are supposed to be to organize my papers and things by the day. I have the kids' cubbies back here. Those are books that I read that are by certain authors. I try to pick books by certain authors. I used to do an author study. I haven't had time, but they're the little animals and things that go with them. They're my basketballs for my March Madness classroom transformation. This has just various math materials and word work materials. And then like when we do this board, these coincide with those. You can see those match. Here's my desk arrangement for now. So two students get picked to sit at the table each day and I switch groups each day. And then I move these eight desks around periodically because I like changing them around. And it's nice to be able to separate kids so they can work more independently. There's our pencil challenge. They have pencil pouches like this and they start with six and I number them with their student number and then they turn them in each week to get them sharpened and counted and if they have all their pencils they get a little prize so we're in our last stretches of that and those are my sit spots so kids know that workspaces are there for them to sit on and if you have any questions let me know but that's just a brief overview of my room I have a bookshelf here too where I keep read alouds for that season or month 
there's my pineapple clock back there and I need to get myself together because work starts soon. Just give you a little pan around here. All right, see you later. Hey, so that was a quick little brief overview of my room. I literally have like one minute before I need to get to work, but I thought I'd let you know what I'm doing today. So we're gonna do our last lesson in chapter eight, which is standard measurement, so inches and feet. And it is all about making line plots. So I had to kind of teach myself what a line plot is and how you use it because we didn't do line plots in first grade. We did all kinds of other types of graphing, but not line plots. So that's kind of cool. So that's what lesson nine is going to be to end our chapter. And then I will do a review. And then tomorrow I will test on the chapter and I will start the next one. So that's pretty awesome. In Power Hour this week, we are going to be talking about area. So that'll be awesome. I found a Brain Pop Junior on area that explains it really well. We'll take the little quiz and then I have some introductory lessons for that that shows them how the, the grid works when you do area. We'll be doing it with repeated addition because they don't really do multiplication in second grade. I mean, I will show them what it is and what it means when you say two times four or whatever. So they'll know what that is but I will have them break it down into repeated addition because that will be a lot easier for them to understand. Okay, um, we'll be reading some poetry this week out of the book Old Elm Speaks, and that's something that we're working on for the fourth quarter. Our standard is rhyme and rhythm in poems and poetry. So we'll be working on that. And we'll be reading about rainbow plants because we're going to start learning about how seeds are dispersed and different ways that can happen. And we're going to learn how to make a diagram or a model I show how seeds could be dispersed other than by animals. Like we could make something artificial to disperse seeds. That will be exciting. I have a blueberry muffin for breakfast. Yay. Looking forward to that. And then, of course, we have reading groups this afternoon. And we will be doing a whole group vocabulary lesson with iReady. And the kids will be doing individual iReady lessons as well for math because it's Monday. We do math on Mondays and Wednesdays and reading on Tuesdays and Thursdays. All right, I still have late bus duty till the end of the year, so I will catch you later. Hi, it is lunchtime, and I'm trying to decide if I want an actual lunch or if I want one of my breakfasts. I've decided to go with a breakfast because I have more of them in my freezer, and I had a muffin earlier, so this will be nice and substantial, but not too big. Okay, so we did area in power hour, and I'll show you what we did for that. And we did our last lesson of chapter eight for standard measurement. And we did our review for the test tomorrow and they did pretty well. I was not too worried about this test at all. I think it's gonna go well. Also, we got to read a poem out of Old Elm Speaks, which is just a book of poems. I said, look, it's poetries. And they're like, and some of the kids were like, ah, and other kids, like, why is she looking at us like that? So some of them got it, some of them didn't, which that's okay because that's the age. They're right on the cusp of getting those kind of jokes. Okay, well, the poem today was called Hide and Go Seek. And I can show you here. And you see how the elbow and the knee, the author made the word mimic the shape of the elbow and the knee. I pointed that out because the little girl is hiding behind the tree and all you could see was the elbow and the knee. So it mimicked the shape of those body parts. And they're like, oh, that's cool. I said, yeah, see, there's some cool things you can do when you're a writer. And so they thought that was neat. We had just enough time to go over it, notice that, and also pick out the rhymes and then go on to lunch. So that's where they are right now. I'm like, I'm gonna get ready for mine. After lunch, we are going to do cursive. And we, we finished off our lumpy letters, I think is what they're called. Lo loopy letters. I think we're going to the lumpy letters now. And I'm doing two a day because otherwise we will never finish. And then we're going to be learning about rainbow plants and that's a scholastic news. And they'll be doing a comprehension page on that and a main idea and details page where they have to pick out. One of them we'll do together and the other they'll do independently and they'll turn it into me. I'm trying to get them ready for more third grade independent work by doing things where they have to pick answers out of the text because that is something that they need to be able to do, especially when they take their state testing, which we just practiced on Friday. So now I've had like a little sneak peek of kind of what's coming up for them. We had a practice map test. That's a Missouri assessment test that we give to third, fourth, and fifth. I'm not sure how high up that goes. I know it goes through upper elementary for sure. So 
That was interesting. I read a lot of passages and answered a lot of questions citing evidence from the text, which is what I've been having my second graders do for a little while now. Starting with small and then adding on more difficult text, writing more about it, more details, marking it in their page if they're able to. I told them you don't do this in a real book, but if you have a passage that your teacher has said you may mark in this, like close reading, then you can mark it. So we've been practicing that and they've been doing really well. Even my lower readers with a little support have been doing very well with that. So I'm very proud of them. My breakfast slash lunch brunch just beeped. So after we do the uh, scholastic news about plants and do our cursive, other way around, then we're going to have reading groups and then we have vocabulary today for I ready for our whole group lesson. And we're moving on to lesson number 14. So I think I might be able to get all the lessons in before the end of the year because we still have like 12 more days of, no, 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 that's not right. Yeah, 12 more vocabulary days and then 12 more phonics days. I think I figured up because we do two vocabulary a week and two phonics a week. So yay, we're cooking along. Today's been a very productive, good day. It's just been really good. And I'm very proud of my kids for how hard they've worked and how well they've done. Hi, it's the afternoon and this is the first chance I've had to really say anything. Um, I had a meeting at lunch today because we were talking about our new power hour. That's the only time that we could all get together at the same time because some of us are going to be gone parts of the week and we need to get it figured out. And then um, just was a super busy day. Didn't get there super early today. I got there plenty early, but not real early to do anything much because I needed to talk to some people and get some materials ready before school started. Just I have late buses and then it's time to go. So here I am getting ready to go home. We're at the gas station right now because our car is almost on empty. So we can't be doing that. Getting that together. Caitlin's pumping gas. She's getting lots of practice at it so she can do it when she's not at home anymore. Hmm. Yeah, time is dwindling. But it'll be good. She'll have a good time. So wow, we did a lot today. We did a lot today. Let's see. We did more area in power hour. They got to roll to well, they got to roll a dot cube twice and they use those numbers to make the length and the width of their shapes on a grid and they drew their shapes and they figured out the area based on how they drew it and they got to do several of those. So they got all kinds of different sizes, which was really cool. So they totally get how to figure up area. Tomorrow we're going to be making dinosaurs out of area squares. So that's going to be really cool. Then in Go Math, we took our chapter eight end of chapter test, and then I gave them a break. And then we did chap we did chapter nine, the first lesson, which was an introductory lesson. I knew it wouldn't take a lot of time, but I wanted to jump into it and get started because the end of the year is quickly approaching and I want to make it through our book. So they are exposed to everything they're supposed to learn in second grade math so that third grade math is easier. So we started on our metric units this week. So we did centimeters today. And our first lesson today was to use, what did they call them? It was centimeter blocks. Like we use color tiles to start the inches because those are about an inch. I had little centimeter blocks. I think they called them unit blocks in the lesson. Yeah, unit blocks. And they had different lengths of yarn to measure in their book. I had gotten a package of little foam ones from Oriental Trading over the summer last year to use for like patterning or counters or something for math. And I went, hey, I think I have some of these. So I found them and I bagged them up in tens. Now this was a package of 200, so I only had 20 bags of them. So I had some kids share and some kids not share, but they never need more than 10 to measure their yarn. So I said, once you use them for your first yarn, then give your bag to your partner so they can measure the first yarn. So we got some sharing happening, which was good, and they did a great job on that. Then the rest of the time we just used rulers because really they didn't need to do that again. It worked out really well. And then we learned some more about poetry and we learned about some famous poets. And they finished up their Scholastic News article about the rainbow tree. And I did reading groups. And then it was time for late buses and my technology was having issues again. <laughs> it kept skipping and it was really frustrating. So I hope I can get that figured out. I even restarted my computer because I could not get my iReady lesson to work at all. So we were supposed to be working on the sound. Let me put my seatbelt on real fast. We were working on IGH today. And so since I could never get the iReady lesson to load and project, 
I just had them come up with words that they knew sounded like IGH and we decided if it was spelled the right way and we wrote them on our boards. So I made a huge list of words and then we tried to come up with more words that would fit in there that maybe had a digraph or a blend. So like we had fight, so we came up with flight. We, if we'd kept going, we probably could have come up with fright also and blight which I'm not sure they would have come up with blight on their own. That's kind of an odd word for a second grader to use, <laughs> unless they're into farming or something. <laughs> but that's what we did today. Our next phonics lesson will be E-I-G-H. So that'll be good. That'll be on Thursday. Tomorrow will be a vocabulary lesson. I hope my technology is working better. I, don't, I think I may need to put in a technology support ticket because I'm not sure what's going on. I restarted my computer. My computer's it's been updated to whatever system it's supposed to be on right now. So that's not the issue. I don't know if I need to like reset my Apple TV thing with my little remote. I don't know. Something's goofy because my whatever I'm doing will come up on my computer and then like a time delay lag, then it will come up on the screen. So something is not connecting correctly and it's very glitchy. Like if you're trying to show something where they're talking, it's like meh, 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 part of the time. So oh, it's just annoying. So I was trying to show an Arthur <laughs> and it, it played really well for a while and then it just started meh, 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 and they would freeze and spin and I'm like, oh, and I have lots of kids in late bus and they don't have a lot of patience at that time of the day. They're just done. They want to go home. So, you know, they get kind of loud and I'm like, guys, just be patient. It'll come back up. Just be patient. So I did kind of limp it along <laughs> until we could get to buses, but oh. I had some of my kids that had kind of been hanging out at the back of the line come to the front of the line to me, with me today because they were having a little trouble being safe on the stairs because I have a pretty long line and I couldn't always see them the whole time. So I've been having someone follow us down every day so that they can kind of see the end of the line too. And that worked really well. So I'm really happy about that. We are going to have chicken Alfredo tonight and Caitlin and I are going to have broccoli Alfredo. My husband loves the chicken part. And I'm okay either way. I've, I'm going more to the vegetarian side anymore because I just really don't need a lot of meat, I don't think. So, we'll be making some of that from scratch. The Alfredo sauce is from a jar, which I could make from scratch, but I'm not gonna because I don't have enough time tonight. I need to grade my chapter eight math test. And then I think, I think I'm good. I was going to do my Toy Story measurement, like, breakout slash transformation thing on Friday but it turns out we have a reward party for the kids that's going to be over two plan times and teachers are going to meet and work on our pacing guide during that time I thought you know I'm not sure that really gives the kids enough time to be able to work through all of the measurement stations how I want them to so I'm pushing that off till next Thursday because we're off for Good Friday but the really cool thing I figured out was we'll be completely finished with chapter nine by then. So that will be a total end of both measurement chapters review before they take their test on it. So that's gonna work out great. And then they don't have school the next day. So what a great send off for a three day weekend, right? So I'm excited. Plus that gives me more time to work on some stuff because honestly I didn't have everything ready. I need to make some monkeys and I need to get some pipe cleaner measurement bead things ready for each kid and just a few other little things. So I have this weekend to work on that too because I just didn't have enough energy this last weekend to do a lot. So the weather has been absolutely amazingly gorgeous this week. I'm so happy. It was like 71 at recess today and 70 at recess yesterday. And tomorrow I think it's supposed to be even nicer maybe. I think we're supposed to have a little bit of wind coming, but that's okay. A little wind is okay as long as it's not gale force wind. There's some potholes on our road. <laughs> All right, I think I'm just gonna say goodnight here and we'll get home and feed the cats and get stuff ready for tomorrow and cook some supper and eat, watch some TV and go to bed and do it all over again tomorrow. So I'll check back with you then. I didn't get a chance to show you what I was wearing so I thought I'd just give you a quick little up and down and I'm gonna go feed the cats and change in my pajamas and get ready for the night. So I'm wearing a V-neck t-shirt from Walmart. It's hot pink and I think I got it last year. And then I'm wearing this little denim vest from Old Navy that I got in the fall. And then these leggings. Here's my leggings and my shoes. Shoes are from Walmart, leggings are from Walmart. The leggings are from this past fall, I believe. 
and the shoes I've had for a while, so a couple years at least, earrings and necklace, I believe are from Walmart. And I got my Yode watch, my Alex Nanny bracelets, and a ring from Walmart, I believe. And that's everything, yeah. So, there it is. It got kind of warm. <laughs> I'm trying to find my more springy, summery type clothes, but it's it's kind of chilly in the morning. Not super cold, but a little bit chilly. So I'm trying to kind of dress in layers so I can remove stuff. So I could have taken this off today if it was bugging me, but it didn't really bug me because the air gets really cold in my room. And that's what I've been trying to do. Just kind of dress in between so I can peel off. All right, I'm gonna go feed the cats and get ready for the night. See you tomorrow. Good afternoon, it's lunchtime. Getting ready to eat my lunch. But I wanted to show you what we've been working on here. So if you see the room, we're in the middle of locating facts about some poets that we learned about yesterday in a nonfiction text. And they are making these for their reader's notebooks. Finding one fact about each poet from their book using text evidence and writing it under the flap. And then I made a comprehension quiz to go with that text so that they could locate information and answer questions based on text evidence. So they're going to mark it in their book, then answer the question on their paper. So they have to use the table of contents. They have to use some of the bold words and they have to find page numbers. So checking them using their text features, which we've worked a lot on. For math today, we learned how to estimate centimeters. So we made a 10 centimeter strip of paper and I just, I cut strips for them and they had to measure 10 centimeters and cut it to 10 centimeters. Then they went around the room and found things that were about 10 centimeters or less than 10 centimeters. And then they estimated how long they thought those things were. I had them share out and I had one student say, this is really fun, I like this. And I'm like, yay, I'm glad, I like this kind of stuff too. Now they kept estimating measurements in the book for the rest of their lesson. Then we talked about the poets and we also talked about poetic devices. So alliteration, personification, similes, um, repetition. They learned about lines and stanzas yesterday. And then tomorrow we will be reading another poem. They'll get to put a miniature version of the poem that we do in their reader's notebook, so they'll have that forever. So they'll listen for the words and write them down. And then I'll give them the poem later and they can mark the words. And we'll try to find some other phonics skills that we've been working on to mark in there as well. So they can put that together. This afternoon, we're going to be comparing characters in different versions of the same story. So that'll be fun. That's one of our fourth quarter standards that we're working on. And there's my lunch, which is actually breakfast, but that's okay. Then this afternoon, of course, I have reading groups and we'll do a vocabulary lesson from iReady. And then the kids will be packed up and ready to go to their areas for dismissal and I'll have late buses. And technology has been working better today, I think, for the most part. So let's hope it stays that way because it, it's a lot better when it works. And then it'll be time to go. So that'll be great. All right, I'll catch you up later and let you know how things went. I forgot to show you what we did for Power Hour. So we're still working on area. Today we did a dinosaur in Power Hour because we're working on area. So they got to estimate how large an area they thought each body part was. And then they actually measured and figured the area for real. And our estimates were pretty easy because I said, this is like, how many color tiles do you think this is? Because we did all those activities with color tiles so they could visualize it and they really enjoyed it. And then I let them add pieces to their dinosaurs when they had the basic parts. So it had the rectangles, the square and the larger body piece. And then they could add whatever, eyes and scales and fins and whatever they wanted. So they thought that was pretty cool. Tomorrow we'll be designing a bedroom and they'll have to make space for like different things that you find in a bedroom, like a bed, a dresser, a table, a desk, maybe a toy box, things like that. So they'll have to kind of figure out the space that they have and make things 
with certain areas to fit in their space. So I think that's gonna be a great way for them to finish up their area work. And then next week we'll be doing different groups. So we're going to be catching some different skills that some students are having a little trouble with still like addition and subtraction fluency, double digit addition and subtraction, single digit multiplication, double digit multiplication. And then we'll see where our kids fall and see what else we need to add on. So that's gonna be really awesome too. Okay, I'm gonna eat my lunch for real now and get back to work. Hello, good afternoon. I am in the car waiting for Caitlin to try on a prom dress because she got a last minute invitation. She had pretty much decided not to go because she just wasn't that interested. But someone that she knows from her one of her plant groups asked her and she's like, well, if I decide to go, I would go with you. And so her friend talked her into it. And so she's going with this nice boy from her class. And so she's trying on a dress to see if it'll work. Otherwise, we're gonna have to run and find one. And because prom is Saturday and this is Wednesday, no pressure. Today was pretty good. Um, we got everything done that I had set up to accomplish, yay. In my reading groups, I worked on some word skills. So one of my groups, I worked on digraphs because they're having a little trouble with that. And then another group, I worked on long vowels, so that was good. And we did um, vocabulary for our whole group I Ready lesson. And we also did a rhyming activity. We did some context clues. What else? The kids did a comprehension quiz that went along with our poet book that had some biographies in it. Some of the questions were asking things that you'd have to use the text features to answer. Like what page would you find this information on? Some of them were just questions about the different poets in the book. So they had to look through the text to find the answer. And I think they did pretty well. I had them turn them in to me before we left they were done and if they weren't done I held them as well so I guess I have all of them I should and we did the letters B and F today in cursive and man were those hard I have them bring me their paper so I can see how they did and I sent several of them back to practice their F's because F's were so tricky we're getting weird little loop they like they were doing figure eights instead of doing it the same direction so I would erase the F's and I'd say, okay, trace the F's again and then write them again and then trace these words again and write the words again. Poor kid, there was one that I had him go back and redo it three times and he still was having trouble. So I just made up a writing page and I just wrote some F's. I said, trace my F's and then write some F's. And then I wrote a word. I said, trace my words and write the words. So he did that and then he was still having trouble. He was just, they were doing some weird loopy thing. I'm like, it goes this direction guys so I said can I can we write it together can you put the pencil in your hand like you're going to write and I'll show you with my hand I'll guide your hand and he's like okay so I just actually wrote with the kid's hand I said do you feel the movement you feel the path of movement as you're making that letter he's like yeah I said does it feel different than what you were doing uh-huh so once I showed him and he felt it with his hand I think that he'll do a lot better so they'll get lots of practice writing these more but I was really <laughs> I was I was frustrated for them because I know they were like, ah, I'm trying. And they were like, I can't do this. And I said, yeah, you can. If this is just not an easy letter to write. I think F's are tricky because you have two big loops you have to make. So it's okay. We just need more practice on these. It's okay. I don't expect you to be perfect. I just want you to try your best. And then you are trying your best. So you're doing great. So there were several of them. And then on the B, they didn't want to touch the line. I'm trying to really show them that you have to be precise on the lines. Like you start on the bottom line, you go to the middle line, or you start on the bottom line, you go to the top line. Like the stick letters go all the way to the top. The other letters go all the way to the middle line because they have to be precise to make it legible. So every day that we do cursive, one of our learning targets is I can write legibly in cursive. And I always remind them what legibly means <laughs> so that they know what that is. <sighs> We've also been doing every day I can answer questions using text evidence in nonfiction text and also I can read for a purpose independently for an extended length of time because those are our standards and so that's AR time for that and they're reading for a purpose they're reading for meaning and then the other thing is usually I give them some kind of a nonfiction task they have to find answers to questions after reading a passage or reading a short book or something 
because that will behoove them to know how to do that. I mentioned on Friday that all of us teachers took our standardized test that's for third, fourth, and fifth grade. I got the fourth grade version and some of my friends got third grade and some of them got fifth grade. And then we, we graded them today. We got the little grading key for them. And um, then we talked about how we felt about it and with our instructional coach. And I had said, it really made me think about those kids that struggle with reading because this was all ELA because they had a lot of reading to do. I mean, all of it was full of reading, reading, reading. And then fourth grade does a giant essay, which is what I got. And she's like, oh yeah, I meant to tell you didn't have to do that. I'm like, oh, well, I did it anyway. It's okay. I said, I'm actually kind of glad I did because going through it really gave me a taste of what it would be like for those fourth graders. And I said, I thought it was a lot and I'm not a fourth grader. So can you imagine being a fourth grader and having that task in front of you? So that's a big deal. But one thing that encouraged me about seeing this test was a lot of the questions and a lot of the tasks that they were doing were things that we're practicing right now in my classroom. So I was like, yes, I'm doing this right now with my kids. Yay. On a smaller scale and a second grade scale, which makes sense because they're second graders, not fourth graders and not end of year fourth graders at that. So these kids will have had almost two more years. Well, they will have had two more years of school at this point when they take this test. So we, we talked about how we probably need to put more of that into our second grade curriculum, more reading passages and text dependent questions and going back and finding evidence, restating the question, which used to be a huge thing and doesn't seem to be as much of a deal anymore. They always had to restate the question. Like if it said, why does Abraham want to, I don't know, harvest corn? You would say, Abraham wants to harvest corn because or blah, 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 is why Abraham wants to harvest corn. So you have to restate the question somehow in your answer. Well, I'm not sure they're really pushing that as much now. That's kind of how I've taught kids how to answer questions, but it doesn't hurt, that's for sure, to restate the question in your answer. So, yeah, that really gave me a taste for what's coming up, which is what the point of this was. <laughs> So it did, its, it did its job. And we had some really good conversations. One of our teachers was gone in our pod. She had to be gone today for some reason. So she's going to grade it. And we'll, we're going to, all of us in second grade, all of our team is going to discuss um, our takeaways from this test as a group on Friday during our big meeting. All right, back in the car. Well, I never left the car. Caitlin's back in the car. And now we are going to head to the mall to Dillard's. Put work. <laughs> where I got my fancy dresses that I also returned. Let's see if we can find a dress for prom for her. I think we'll have success. I feel I feel confident about this. So I just grabbed a McDonald's. Can't we got a drink? She had food today and I didn't have a lot. So I'm like, I cannot do a major shopping trip without some sustenance. So yeah, we got a person just like randomly walking across the road. Not yeah, not in a hurry. Move out? <laughs> okay. Not in a hurry at all. Big car make boom on person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go on our shopping adventure. So maybe we can take you along and let you see what we find. Good morning. Happy Thursday. So I'm here a little early, so I thought I'd just say hello because I haven't been doing that very often because I've just been so busy. This time of year is just busy, 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 right? Trying to get all the things done, get everything covered, get everything retested and retaught so your kids can be as successful as possible before you send them off for the summer. So today we are going to be doing our third lesson on centimeter measurement and we're going to be measuring lengths of objects to the nearest centimeter using a ruler, which I had them use a ruler before because a lot of them have done it in power hour, but all of the class gets to do it now. And we're going to be doing some poetry so they can pick out rhymes and hear them, rhyme and rhythm. And also we're going to start opinion writing with the three little pigs. We're gonna compare and contrast these guys because they have two different versions of the story. So one is from the wolf's perspective and one is from the pig's perspective. That should be really interesting. And then we have keyboarding this afternoon. I switched it from my Friday time because Fridays just don't seem to work out quite as well. Um, especially this time we have a, a special event going on and we would have missed it completely. So I have those times when we're gonna have a hard time getting in that 30 minutes, I'm just gonna switch it to Thursday afternoons, which I think will be great. So that'll be from one to 
and then the students can do their cursive. It will not cut into my small group reading time because my small group reading time is from 1.30 to 2.25. So it's gonna work out great. That is my science and social studies time generally, but that'll be fine. And I think we have a luncheon today. I think that's today. Caitlin did find a beautiful prom dress and if she says it's okay, I will insert a picture here. If you didn't see a picture, it's because she was a little self-conscious about it and didn't want it to be out there. But it's gorgeous, sparkly, beautiful, lovely dress. And so, yay, success. We also got her some jewelry, which you probably will see in the picture if I was able to show it. And I have some really pretty sparkly silver shoes that she's going to wear. And we got some pretty things for her hair. So it's going to be lovely. She's going to go to her friend's house to get ready for that. They're gonna do each other's hair and makeup and get all pretty and dolled up. So that's gonna be nice. It's her senior prom, so it's her last one. But she, her dress is pretty, pretty grown up looking. She didn't wanna go for a cutesy kind of younger prom date kind of dress. So I'm, I'm happy with the choice that she made and she is too. And her dad thought it was beautiful as well. So, and it was on sale. <laughs> it was still, you know, a prom dress and they're not real cheap, but it was less expensive than some. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm going to get to work because I realized when I printed my measurement booklets for an activity coming up next week that they, some of the pages printed upside down. So I need to print them differently. So I'm going to fix that and I'm gonna get myself together for the day. So I'll chat with you later. Oh, here's my outfit real quick because I haven't been showing that lately. So I have a jumper on that's a sleeveless and it's just black and white stripes from Walmart. And it's really long actually. And then I have my shoes here and I painted my toes pink. And I have my lovely watch, my bracelets, an earring and necklace set that came together from Cato, I believe. And then my hair has not been cut for a while because I missed my hair appointment since I was supposed to go to Miami and then it, that didn't happen. So I have a hair appointment coming up sometime. Yay. All right. See you later. Good morning and happy Friday. Woohoo! We made it through a long, productive week almost. So I don't even think I closed out my vlog yesterday. I've not been the best vlogger lately and I apologize, but I have just been so busy at school. You know, it's nearing the end of the year and we have lots to do. Lots of data to collect, lots of reteaching and retesting to do, which requires regrading and remarking of report cards. Um, lots of longer lessons because of more complex concepts. And um, we're having extra meetings to work on things, which we'll have one today. We'll have an extra long morning meeting today while the kids are at a reward party for missing a day or less of school. They get to go to the gym and watch a movie. I don't know what the movie is, but they're super excited. And then the kids that didn't meet that reward, they still get to do something kind of fun. They go to the specials teachers and they keep them occupied and give them fun things to do during that time. So I'll have a double plan time meeting this morning so that we can go over data and we can also work on our first quarter ELA pacing guide because we have all the other three quarters basically done. We need to probably add a few things here and there, but first quarter um, has the most holes in it right now because we started in third quarter. So we did third, then fourth, then we did second, and now we're doing first. So we'll be all ready to start the year, which is awesome. Some of us have worked on it a little bit in our pods, which a pod is like half of the grade worked on at one time and half of the grade level worked on the other time because we don't have the same plan time as everyone. So we did that a little bit. And Fridays are always crazy busy and very productive. So we're gonna have a great day. Good afternoon. It's like five o'clock and it's Friday night and I'm so tired. <laughs> Isn't that just the way we always feel now? Just tired. Doesn't matter when it is, what day it is, what time it is. Just always tired. So I feel like one of the world's worst vloggers ever. Like I start a vlog in the day and then I never finish it because by the time I get home, I'm exhausted. And I just, I don't even think about getting on the camera, honestly. Oh my gosh, my days are just jam packed. So school doesn't start at any different time than it did before. But like af right after the kids are dismissed to pickups in the early bus places, I have a huge group of students that ride the late buses, like the second shift of buses. And I have them from like 10 till 3 until like 340. So it's a good long time. And then by the time I get them all sent to their buses, because I walk them all the way down to the buses. By the time I get back up, we've got all the buses loaded. 
it's time to go home. So I have no time to film in my classroom after school because Caitlin's waiting for me and I have to get to the car. So we've had like, we've had extra meetings because we have things we need to do, right? And we got to have a meeting for it. Otherwise, how are we going to do it? So that's just, that's just life right now. It's just life. And I really apologize though, because I feel like my vlogs have been kind of meh. Because I'm not able to really show you much in my classroom because I just don't have time. <laughs> so I am so sorry. I don't know that that's going to change anytime soon because it's not getting less busy. It's getting more busy. The closer we get to graduation, the more those type things I'm going to need to do. So yeah, we're getting, and we're going to have a field trip coming up. We have testing coming up and one of my um, teenies today counted how many days left we have and it's 26 and a half, 26 and a half more days of school. That's crazy. And Caitlin has even less because she graduates, right? So kids, normal kids, normal kids, kids that aren't graduating get out the 22nd. And like I said, there's a field trip. There's testing, 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 testing. There's, um, we do a special thing for second graders. It's like a send off to third grade. So we have a finale thing for them. That's after school into the evening, one of the nights coming up. And we have like some presentations coming up and we have a science fair kind of thing coming up, which I guess it's a showcase kind of thing. It doesn't have to be science. It could be anything, but there's a showcase day coming up and I was thinking there might've been something else, but that sounds like plenty, <laughs> plenty to do. You know, this time of year, it just tends to be a little, a little stressful, a little overwhelming. There's just a lot to do. And this is when we're like super tired and the kids are super energetic because they're excited for summer. The spring weather has come and it's nicer outside. And, you know, everybody's kind of longing for the nice weather to be out in rather than staying inside and focusing on things. So, you know, it's a struggle. <laughs> we're all struggling a little bit because of it. But we'll get there. We always do. We always make it. But that is what's been happening anyway. So that's why probably half the days I didn't even close out the vlog for the day. I just stopped filming because there just wasn't time. You know, Fridays are always, you know, boom, boom, boom anyway, because they're shorter and there's a lot packed into them. But I did want to tell you something super cool that happened today. So on Fridays, I have a co-teaching session where I teach with our reading teacher, who's amazing, by the way. So we generally will plan something like the week before. A lot of times she already has something great in mind. She's like, oh, I've done this lesson before and I've got this lesson. Do you have any ideas or would you like to do one of these? And I'm like, I think that one sounds awesome. Let's do that one. And so I help her with that. But she kind of takes the lead on that one because it's her lesson and she knows kind of how it does. She'll do like a mini lesson and then there'll be a, an activity or a project or something for them to do with it. And so I will go around and like support the students and help answer questions and guide them and things like that. But today we read I Want an Iguana because we're working on persuasive slash opinion writing. That's our standard for this writing unit for this quarter. And so we've been working on all different kinds of opinion and persuasive things. And so she and I kind of put our heads together a few weeks ago and said, oh, what do we want to do? And I said, hey, I really like using these kind of books for that. That's what I've done in first grade. She's like, oh, yeah, I love that book. So since it's got, it's all letters. If you've never read the book, you should because it's really cute. And it's great for persuasive writing. Oh, my goodness. Totally great. So the little boy in the story is writing letters to his mom Telling her all of the wonderful things that will happen if he gets this iguana and how he'll take care of it and how it'd be a great addition to his his room and it'll be a friend that he needs and he's going to you know, be super responsible and clean the cage and feed it and he'll even pay for the food with his allowance money and all this stuff. Well, the cool thing is it's letters back and forth. So he'll write a letter to his mom and she'll write a letter back to him. He'll write a letter back to her and just keeps going back and forth. So the whole book is like that. So we decided, since I had two copies of the book, she also had one, but I had two in my room. We decided that it would be really cool if we each took a roll and we read the letters to each other. So we each held the book. And when the other one was reading, we held up the picture so the kids could see it. 
And then it was the other one's turn, we just switched. Like when it was my turn to read, she would hold up the picture. And when it was her turn to read, I would hold up the picture. So she read the part of the mom and I read the point, the part of Alex, the son. And it was super cute and super fun. And the kids loved it. They absolutely loved it. And then I had found a freebie thing, which was a graphic organizer that went with that story. And it had like your topic sentence, which was your opinion, and then three supporting like reasons and then details that that went along with each reason. Now the kids had a little trouble with that. I just had them think within the perspective of the boy that was in the story. I said, pretend like you're Alex and you're telling us how you were going to persuade your mom to let you have an iguana. Just like the things in the book. We're going to kind of use those type of ideas. <clears throat> Some of them had no trouble at all. Other ones were kind of stuck. And so it was kind of a mixed bag. I think they all really did try hard, but some of them were just having a really hard time coming up with the details to go with their reasons. And so that made it a little harder for them, but it was really cool. So we talked about that afterward later after school and we were like, Hey, that was really fun. And she was like, yeah, that was really fun. We should do something like that again, where it's a back and forth. And I said, yeah, let's find another book like that. Well, I had Dear Mr. Blueberry. If you've never read that, that's a great one too. So it's about this girl who's writing to her teacher and she's telling him about this whale that lives in this freshwater lake near her and she's been feeding it and stuff. <laughs> and so it's a back and forth and the teacher's like, um, that sounds really great except there are no freshwater whales and blah, blah, blah. So she's giving reasons that this whale exists and he's giving reasons why the whale couldn't possibly work the way she's saying it is and all this kind of stuff. So it's very similar kind of a concept as I want iguana with the back and forth letter writing. And so I brought that to our meeting, our, our uh, grade level meeting this afternoon. And I said, Hey, you want to do this one? She's like, Oh yeah. I said, that's got the back and forth letters too. She's like, yes, let's do that. We're also going to do duck rabbit because that's great for opinion. Like, do you think it's a duck? Do you think it's a rabbit? Why do you think so? Give your reasons why. So, which is perfect for Easter time around this time of spring and everything where you're getting all the brand new babies of everything. So that's, we've already got two lessons planned. So I think we might do one next week, even though we don't have our normal day, we might do it on another day so we can do another lesson together because it was so fun and it was really great for the kids. The kids really like when you do stuff like that because it's different and it makes it more interesting. And I like that they're getting another perspective from a different teacher. So that's really nice. That's why it's really cool. Like when we plan something together and we do it like we did today, that was super fun. But I also like hearing how she teaches things. I just, I like listening to her mini lessons myself. I enjoy being in the lesson and hearing it. So that's really cool. I'm going to go now and just relax and maybe kick back and watch some TV. So I hope that you had a wonderful week. I'm not sure what this vlog is even going to look like because I'm sure I didn't even finish some of the days. So we'll just have to see. And I will check back with you next time.